Hi there, Dan West again. Well, it happened. <laughs> I have, it happens to all of us, you know. Uh, there's, there's an old saying, uh, if you're not making a mistake every now and then, you're not working. And that happens to the best of us. Like I said before, my wife's a, uh, she's an accountant. She's semi-retired. I say semi because her full eight-hour job, she's retired from that. But for years, she's had her accounts. She, she started getting uh, clients for bookkeeping, simple bookkeeping. And her bookkeeping skills uh, progressed and progressed to where she does some corporate accounts. <clears throat> uh, and she also does tax uh, preparation returns, what have you. Uh, like I said, she retired, but she still has her clients and she does it. She, she enjoys it, keeps her busy, it's fine keeps me in tools. <laughs> I'm retired. Uh, but I play it in the shop here. Well, uh, we've had some really, we're, we're breaking records for rain this year in California. And um, I was sad to say along with the fires. But uh, she has clients who come and pick up uh, things, uh, things related to payroll, what have you, or, you know, just business related accounting. And and they'll drop off stuff also. <clears throat> and, you know, sometimes we're not here, so, or they, or they come different hours, so it just places it, you know. And she's been playing, like, under the mat. And that's something I've never kind of thought, you know, it's too cool, but, you know, our porch is covered. It's, it's not exposed to weather, but still, you know. So I think, you know what, it, with all this rain, I'm going to make her a box, uh, uh, like a mailbox, even though. We don't use it for mail. The mails slide you through our door. But I'm going to be making a brand new door anyways uh, with all glass. So that, that slot in the door is going to be gone. So this will actually turn into our mailbox. So I started, and I work in pine. Uh, main reason is my wife's office in Naughty Pine because she likes Naughty Pine. And I remember having a family member at a, a cabin, a two-story two two home. And uh, I believe it was Big, Big Bear. And it was all naughty pine. I mean, inside out, the walls, everything. I'm, I'm, I'm a little too much naughty pine for me, but still, you know, some people like it. But it's it's inexpensive. You know, I, it's inexpensive. Uh, it's reasonably fair to work with, you know. Uh, and I say reasonable, I'll show you why. And, um, but it's, I've always learned from, uh, from, as an apprentice, it's very, really hard to work with. Because the novice thing is really easy to work with. Because the problem yeah, is, you have any detail, you'll in sanding, you'll you'll wipe it out, and uh, it breaks easy. Well, this is what happened. I'm thinking about what kind of a little box to make her, and I'm making a little house or something, you know. And so I, I just start dovetailing. So and I got my tails, my pins all made up, and I go to make my tails. Boom. <laughs> <laughs> they split, cracked, and that's a problem with pine. You know, you you got to be really, really delicate with it. You can't, and if there's a little cupping in it, and this had a little, slight amount of cupping, you know, I, I still was able to, you know, uh, you put it in a vise and, and, and get it straight and trace it. You know, I should have known better, really. It's an amateur mistake, and uh, I paid the price. So I closed up the shop. So what am I going to do? So I got to thinking about it all night, and um, I think all different ways of doing things. And you, you know, I'm this board here, Ponderosa pine, pine. It's all uh, boards glued together, so it's very stable, and it's reasonably straight. It's, it's, it's pretty nice, you know. I've I've done a lot with it. Um, Naughty pines again, not that expensive compared to buying slabs of oak or walnut or whatever, pecan. <clears throat> And uh, this is something I'll throw together anyways, and um, 
It's one inch. I could put it. I was thinking about my my lock miter. My my lock miter Freud cuts a one inch lock miter. And the more I thought about it, well, the problem of cutting the top and the bottom. I, if I could keep the peak the peak on it, you know. And anyways, long story short, I thought all the finger joints and everything. I thought so. I started going with finger joints. And then I got to think, well, you know, either way, that, that, that little pitch, like a roof, like, like a little house is going to have to go. Then I got to thinking about it. Uh, that's something I learned a while back. <clears throat> it's called a green-green uh, style. It's, uh, it's, like a, it's like a finger joint, but they're, they're large, you know. And, and uh, it's not that... Uh, they make some. They make some beautiful furniture. If you've ever looked them up, um, uh, but it's also it, it can be very forgiving in that sense. And uh, uh, I'm not going to hand cut them. I'm going to put them on a. I've got uh, my table saw. I'm going to put a, a dado stack in there and the wide as I can get it, and uh, cut them with a dado dado stack. Time and it's easy. It's easy. So that's what I'm going to do. That's what this video is about, and I'll just uh, show you kind of step by step what I'm going through. And and other than that, I just wanted this introduction to you know why I'm doing this. And um, I hope you like it. Uh, and uh, with that, uh, I guess I'll just uh, see you as we progress. Uh, um, again, this is going to be just for her, like a mailbox for her to for her client to drop off stuff or or de deliver something, information for her to, to work with. And, and eventually it'll, it'll turn out to be our regular mailbox when I make a, a brand new door. So with that, let's get working, okay? See you at the uh, stall or whatever. Bye-bye. <laughs> and here we go. Uh, I'm cutting this uh, board to a rough length. And rough length means just a little bit longer than what I need. And uh, this pine, well, by the way, uh, Conroe pine, all these mills, that's scrap pine there, right? They take all the scrap, they cut it to size, they, they plane it, put a joiner in, make it straight, then they glue them together, they, they uh, plane them again, cut them aside, and sand them. Uh, and then they ship them out, usually in plastic. So, you know, these are well made boards. There I am, scribing, I want two of the same size. Now I'm going to tilt it up. I've got a little four-inch uh, adjustable uh, square in my vest pocket there, and I cut it. By the way, this vest is a Duluth uh, clothing item. Duluth uh, makes a lot of really great clothing. Uh, they're not cheap, but they make really good work gear. All my stuff's Duluth anymore, and um, I couldn't be more pleased with them. Uh, there was one area, one other company they make out of leather. I was really thinking about getting that, um, and I'm, they'll. Make it any way you want it, the pockets, whatever, exactly how you want it. Pretty nice, really nice. But I don't like that type of uh, where you're tied around, you know, it's almost like a halber top type. I like a coat, a, a vest type of deal. And uh, they also make really good stuff, but um, uh, Duluth won me out and uh, I couldn't be happy with their stuff. So you see how my blades come through? I remember I had it high, that high and it came through the, uh, the, the protection board I had in the back, so I'm going to make adding another uh, uh, feature to the back to, to conceal that blade. I'm not so much worried about the saw. This is the blade coming through like that. I don't like the idea of it coming through and, you know, open like that. And I'm sure this is not going to be the last time I'm going to do something like, like this with this uh, style of uh, <coughs> uh, cabinetry. Um, other than that, you're going to see me in the next few uh, kind of test fitting this thing. And one thing about fingerboards, you cannot make, there I am right there, you cannot make all the sides the same size fingers. One side is going to have to be at least uh, uh, a little bit bigger, whether it's the back or the front. You're going to see me put it in there and I'm going to catch myself, then I've got to make an adjustment. Nope, nope, now nah, I've got to flip it back over and I'm going to make that adjustment right now. I'm going to take it just... Uh, there, my my guide. I'm look. I'm gonna squeeze it over just a, oh maybe a millimeter at the most. At the most, make a line there, and that's where I'm gonna recut everything. So uh, right there, and I'll cut them all like that. Just a little bit, a little bit larger. Go back to my mark. 
And I, again, if you're going to do some fingerboards, I, I would say, you know, do the most simplest. Get just, uh, you know, your sled and, uh, you know, sacrificial board with whatever size uh, finger you're cutting, quarter, three eighths, half inch, you know, make your little peg there and, and then just flip it over, flip it over. I mean, that's it's so simple. You don't need all this old gadgets and stuff. But if you like that stuff, you know, go for it, but you really don't need it. You really don't. I've always found the simplest is the best, you know, and when you learn how to do things uh, pretty much the, uh, the old fashioned way, everything else, it just kind of falls into place so much easier. And uh, don't get me wrong, they have some really nice stuff out there that uh, I use too. I, you know, uh, I don't uh, pull the hard way anymore. You know, Paul Sellers, uh, great, great craftsman. Man, he does everything by, by hand. Uh, same as the, uh, the Roy Underhill. You know, I mean, he has no power tool whatsoever. I mean, it, you know, and if you're into it, that's no problem. But uh, I've done enough of it. I've done it all like that. And uh, I do like machines. So, uh, so I've got a hollow chisel mortiser now. I don't problem my, I don't make my mortises all out of hand like I used to. You know, if you if you can, you know, by all means, you can buy those things if you can. Here's the dado stack. My dado stack. Get that name there. That set of dado stack came with several uh, shims, round shims, and you need shims to to just you know just your uh, your with your dado stack. I'm surprised how some of the guys say, you know, their dado stack didn't come with any. I made two templates, uh, one for the sides and one for the front and back. And I mean, I just laid out over and over and over again to try to get the right balance and, and still keep the theme of a green and green and yet have the, the look that I was looking for in this particular box. Uh, so uh, this is my template before I took the last piece of plastic off the double back side tape there I should take a picture of it, you know and put it in the video so that's what this is uh, this is uh, this is from the looks of it it's going to be uh, the, the front or the back if it's, it's shorter and uh, that's what I use with a, a three-quarter a two and a half inch uh, uh, a router bit a half inch shank and uh, uh, I cut the excess off with the uh, um, saber saw uh, and a jigsaw excuse me a jigsaw and then trim the rest off with the router it came out uh, just uh, as sweet as can be look really nice well this little box is just trying to take shape I know it's not so little but uh, this is the way it's going to be sitting on its base on its pedestal and it's, it's not little, because it's, it's got to handle big uh, envelopes like this for my wife. And sometimes she gets quite a bit of information handed to her, uh, you know, for the taxes, what have you, information. So, yeah, it's not a little box by, by any means. But, you know, it's simple. Uh, I, you know, look, this type of joinery is very forgiving. Uh, uh, what I'm going to tell you before I show you to you is it's on the order of uh, green green. Was it was a, uh, the Green Brothers were uh, manufacturers of furniture uh, many years ago and, and um, it was said that it kind of took off from the Japanese joinery type of uh, idea but I mean they really went into it really well. I mean uh, when I was talking about my, my bench units were all wrapped up in this uh, furniture uh, carpet. It, it, because it's too cold. I don't want to, I don't want to glue it. Um, it. It is weather. We're having really, really cold weather right now. <clears throat> but what I want to clarify is when I was talking about the mortises on my bench, all 18 points of double mortise and tendon joints, I was talking about how you know don't make it so tight. You got to put them together with hammers. Or you got to you got to lean on it, and, you know, and, 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 and step on it, and pound on it, put your weight on it. Because if it's that tight, where's the glue going to go? This is a structure that is going to be have is going to be uh, applied to force. Uh, it's a workbench, and um, um, you you need to have uh, you, you know the glue to bond. Now, 
Japanese joinery, uh, no glue whatsoever. But they have compound members coming into the same joint that locks everything up. So, I mean, there's no need for a joint. Mortise and tenon, they fit in the pocket and that's it. And now, you usually pin them. And now when you pin them, that's good. And if you want, you could probably just leave it that way if you wanted to and not put anything in it. In it. But I, I think still, would not have any glue, just the stress, because it's not just sitting there like a table with a vase on it. You're, you're working on it, you're, you're, you know, you're doing things, applying force, different directions, and it, it'll kind of work loose. Uh, that's why I'm saying you ought to give yourself at least, you know, a 30 second uh, gap to where you can just push them in. And with a little gap, even gap, but I mean, not sloppy loose, you can t tap with your fist and it'll, it'll pound in, slide in. But when you put that glue in there, now that glue is going to be all over. I guarantee it'll be all over. And it'll really bond tight and well. Dovetailing, inlays, or something like this, uh, how the Green Brothers used to work, uh, very tight, very, very precise um, connections, in, in no gaps, even had in inlays. What's good about this is this is a very good introduction for a beginner to start box joints or any kind of joinery. This is a glorified box joint. Big, big chunks. Where box joints have a bunch of very symmetrical, same size, you know, squares, whatever. Uh, you do this, and even if you have gaps, it's all right. This type, this type of joinery is not a problem. It, it, it's accepted. Uh, you can even put screws on the on the end so it, so it locks it in, or you could you could put dowels. In this case, I'm putting screws. I'm not no glue. There's no glue in this thing. I got two and a half inch screws, and I'm plugging them with uh, uh, some uh, African uh, uh, mahogany. What you usually do uh, in, uh, in that style of, uh, of, uh, of joinery, and uh, again, you, you can start with this, then when you get pretty good at this, you can try box joints, all the different types of jigs you can make. Uh, the simplest jig, in my opinion, is the best. Just a, you know, a sled with a little peg and then go. You don't need all these clamps and all you other do, but they have them out there, different type of jigs. You can even buy them, no more power to you. Then, if you still like this, you can move up to dovetailing. And uh, now again, dovetailing has got to be precise. You got to be tight. Yes, you're going to use a, a hammer like this to put them in. You know, preferably with a block. I see guys just pound on a. You know, get a block still and, and pound on on that piece. I don't care if it's oak or what. Still, get a factory for block. Get in the habit of using a block. Remember, I had a good habits. Always get a block between your hammer and your workpiece, and tap it in. I don't care what hammer you use, steel or or, or even one like this. Now, this is what this looks like. It's, it's not perfect, but for what it's going to be, it's just fine. There's a one peg I've already got in there. And uh, all screwed. All the, all the holes are, are uh, the square uh, pegs are already, already pounded out. And I did it with this. And I'll never do it again with this. <laughs> I just, out of a... Uh, out of necessity, because I kind of thought about all this whole like, this, uh, uh, change in design because I, had, you know, I tried to uh, do with my uh, the uh, one by twelve uh, pine uh, dovetailing and I got all my pins slightly cupped and I, I should have known better. Ooh, I lost all my tails, so uh, I put everything away and got to think of what I'm going to do, and I came up with this idea, and now I got to have these little square. Um, or holes over the uh, the round holes where I got the screws in it. And what am I using? My hollow chisel motor screw. Now you can use it. You take the screw out and, and just use that square. Tap it on the back side. But I'll tell you what. If you did that too much, that back side will mush. This this thing will this thing will will mushroom out. You'll never get it back in your, your machine, or unless you got to you know turn it down or work on it, but you're going to basically ruin it, you know, uh, for no reason at all. Lee Valley makes these things specifically for, for that, just to, to, to score out a round hole, different sizes. They don't give them away either, so uh, they're about 30 bucks a piece. 
Um, but, uh, you know, if that's what you want to do, uh, you want to you dance, you got to pay the band, huh? And uh, um, that's, uh, you know, that's, that's the way to do it. Do it right. If you, and again, if you, when you commit yourself to something, that's what you have to do. I made myself a little, um, little block here, a little, little uh, block to cut these, uh, these pegs. I don't want to put them on a chop saw or, you know, on a table saw or whatever. So I got them a half inch, one inch, one inch and two inch. I mean, I just did it while I made it up. Uh, it's a simple thing. And I got my sander back here. So, it's a, uh, it's a, it's a uh, you know, a disc sander and a uh, belt sander. It's a simple, little small, fits my needs perfect. So, it's uh, been a little good tool. So that's it. I just wanted to kind of go over that. Now I got a lot of handwork to do. Uh, a lot of times before I f close off here, these pieces will be finished before assembly, rounded, however you want to do it, however you want to take care of them. Um, and the length of how they, you know, extend, we call it being proud, uh, varies. Usually it's, you know, not, not that much. It depends what you're doing. Usually in furniture, it's not that much. But again, it depends. And this style is very forgiving in, in terms of no hard, fast, it's got to be all this way. No, it's not. It's, it's, you can vary how, however you want. There's a famous house in uh, Pasadena that uh, I would, I would uh, suggest you look up. Uh, the Wood Whisperer uh, went there and did a camera um, uh, of the interior and the exterior and all the different variations of how the Green Brothers uh, uh, treated certain areas. It's uh, even even handles and all that. I mean, they made everything. Uh, it shows you the, the the freedom you have, and still keeping the basic concept and style. So uh, it's pretty much what you want to do. You're keeping the basic idea. It's kind of like a Rubo bench. Rubo's got a basic style, but each individual kind of modifies it to his own personal needs. So uh, uh, what I want to do, I went ahead and mounted it together. There's no glue on that thing. I got two and a half inch screws going there, counter, counter, you know, balance away, you know, uh, so that's uh, strong. Inch material, I mean, it's strong. But the way, the look I'm looking for is I want to round just to where the woods meet and not go past it. So uh, I'm going for a different look now. I, I'm going to be all day doing this here. here. So uh, I just thought I would mention that and uh, you'll see what it looks like when I get done. And I got the top and bottom uh, pieces. Uh, the lid's going to hinge, and um, it, but I'll, I'm going to be doing some uh, some design there too. I'm not exactly how I'm going to do it, but I'll come up with something and uh, show you then. Other than that, I'll get back to work and uh, catch you on the next one. Okay, bye. Get back to work. All right, and here we have a picture of one of the two templates that I made for the top uh each template will do either the sides both sides or the front and back and uh, the reason i see the red tape there i was about to glue it and and, and route it and i said wait a minute take a picture of it that's what dvd is all about and video i should say not dvd so i uh took the red tape off uh adhered it in the proper place and i cut the excess off with a uh, little jigsaw and then I uh, routed it with a uh, three-quarter router, half-inch shank, and a ball bearing up on top, inch and a half long. And it just came out to slipper as a whistle. And you know, after all that, you know, do a little standing or what have you, and go over with a little uh, half-inch, uh, make a quarter around over a bit, which I made everything a quarter around. It's a style I was keeping to it. And uh, <clears throat> the whole downs are from Gary Bloom and Forge. Uh, great, great work he does. Look, we call them ballets in France. There's the box, all uh, all finished up. And you know, let me tell you something. I know it may be ugly on people. Uh, uh, it's funny looking, but it's just something I had. A, I had some enjoyment in making. Uh, everything is so big and, and extended because of my days of timber framing. I just, you know, all our 
all our pegs are left out, you know, and I just thought it kind of looked neat. It's a big box anyway, so there's no way of making it look delicate, <laughs> you know, and, you know, and, you know, usually fragile, whatever. <clears throat> I saw a guy on YouTube make the same basic idea of, of, of framing carpentry, and he made concrete molds specifically for planter boxes. And uh, any professional will tell you, you know, putting two bys in the ground and making an old square rectangle, it, it's all right, but they decay and they're really not that, that good. There's any number of reasons why they, they don't like them. But, and yet they still use them. I know they still use them. But, his, he had, in the corners where he had this mold, he had a uh, uh, plastic tube and he would, they would take it out afterwards. So it'd make a hole so that you could take your rebars and drive them through the corners. To, to secure everything to the ground, you know, to where it just stand straight up, you know. And what we know with whole all, all of us, uh, you know, they're dirt with inside. And you can make a square uh, or rectangle or any length you want. It was pretty ingenious. He's on YouTube, you know, try to look it up. Uh, again, my basic design kind of goes back from uh, not only the Japanese style, but uh, my days of timber framing where I had, you know, we had things, our, our pigs are left, uh, you know, very proud. Of, and uh, that's just what I wanted to do. I, I wanted to hand around everything after it was constructed. Uh, most of the time, this stuff is done all around. It's done before assembly. But I didn't want that look. <clears throat> and uh, so I, you know, you can see where all the templates uh, made the, uh, the configuration on top, which is pretty much like Green Green's uh, basic overall design. It just varies from item to item and where it may be applied when it's on a wall or a light box or or a chest of drawers anything even go upstairs it's amazing like, how they apply this stuff this this one house like i mentioned earlier you know that the uh, wood whisper took a camera to it's really worth the while just to take a look um you're going to see that uh, i've finally got a uh, coat of uh, uh, polyurethane on this and I'm going to probably put at least at least six of that eight coats on this thing and uh, uh, again it's not going to be subject to any direct weather but uh, our, our, our front entrance is recessed and we have quite a nice overhang and uh, but it's still subject to heat and humidity even though it doesn't get any direct sunlight at all nor does it even come in contact with any water but you know it's outside again and um, other, than, other than that, uh, you know, I had fun with this. I had, you know, it's, it's, I still have the pedestal to make. Um, uh, the, uh, what do you call it, the, uh, the legs and, and whatnot, uh, and the arms are gonna support this. I, you're gonna see later, I have, uh, oh, I, I don't have this catch up program because I don't want to spend seven, eight hundred dollars for a, you know, a, a software program that I'll hardly ever use. I think it'd be a lot of fun, but <clears throat> I very seldom use uh, plans. Even though I took architecture and drafting in school, I uh, I'm very adept at uh, blueprint reading. I better be a, a superintendent for the biggest companies in L.A. Uh, but I, I use story poles. Yeah, if I'm making like cabinetry or something or some kind of an item, I, I use story poles for my all my heights and my widths, you know, my lengths, because they're more accurate than blueprints. I'm telling you, I can lay, I can lay a story pole right there on the item and see if I'm there or not. Whereas you're reading, you're reading something and you're reading, you take your tape measure, you can you can transpose numbers so quick. You know, first time I saw this picture, I thought it looked like a toilet. <laughs> I just got to tell you, so I just just struck me. Oh my god, people are thinking this is a toilet or something, you know. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but yeah, you know, I, I used, I, I, that's why a lot of times I say I don't have plans if I don't, you know, I, I got a basic numbers and, and like even here, I'm telling you, I'm, I don't quite figure out how I'm going to finish the, uh, the pedestal block. I usually come up with something, you know, and, uh, unless it's a long thought out project I've had in the back of my mind for quite a while, that's a little bit different, you know. So here's the first coat of uh, polyurethane, the first of probably eight. I said six, but I think I'm probably going to go eight coats. I, I just really want to, you know, get a lot on this thing and, and uh, not have to monkey around afterwards. I'm, I'm sure every, every down I might do something after quite a while. You know, being 72 years old, uh, I'm, not, I'm not too worried about the uh, <laughs> so the decades ahead of me. I'm, 
I'm just trying to have some fun before I finally kick. Who knows when that could be? You know, when you're at that age already, you know, you know, you never know. So uh, I take a day at a time, and I just try to enjoy myself as best I can. And even though I, I bought all these tools, I said, "Well, you're already old. Well, why not? You know, I, I really have it to lose it and not have it at all." So, so here's the closest I get to drawing plans anymore. Is this uh, two by six? Kind of giving you a shot of my bench at the same time. I've had people ask me, you know, do you ever use your bench? Oh, well, that's why I kind of put my bench in a, the same the same picture. Old piece of uh, two by six that I had doing something laying around. I just grabbed it and just started drawing on it, and uh, can't quite make out what I have there. But what, I, what you're looking at is actually uh, uh, the top uh, set of arms that are going to be coming out. And of course, the box is uh, longer than is wide, so that's why you see those two those two lines there to the right. Because one represents the, the the length, the longer end, and the other one re represents the, the shorter end. And there's a center line going around those two uh, boreholes. You can see it, and that's everything being worked off of. So, <clears throat> um, you know, I, it's just kind of a rough idea. This, there, you see that's going to be the bottom where it kind of goes up. Up in and then back down again. Uh, that's the the, the bottom uh, configuration of what it's going to look like. So um, again, you know, uh, I don't have those heavy programs because they're you know, seven, eight, nine hundred dollars. I I don't see any justification for what I do. Uh, you know, it's and I'm I'm not don't have a website, so I'm not I'm not out there trying to sell sell. Uh, Plans and whatnot, you know. Uh, if I ever had any great demand for, it, maybe I would, I would do it just for that. But right now, I'm not looking to make money at it. Uh, maybe I do it just to help people out with something. But uh, I don't usually get that uh, that technical and some things. We'll see what happens, you know. See as it as it goes. Other than that, that's it. Uh, that's it for now. I'm going to be starting on the uh, on the post, and uh, I hope to. Uh, Getting something done along that uh, within the next couple of days or so. So uh, until then, I'll just uh, leave it at that, and uh, I'll, I'll jump into it. Uh, it'll be twinkling long eye for you. For me, it'll be a few days. Okay. Well, here it is. I've uh, finished this uh, this box mailbox. Uh, I know it may seem ugly to some people. <laughs> Uh, I think in a lot of ways it's not the prettiest thing, uh, but, you know, for what I was trying to accomplish, um, it fits our needs, because, um, like I said before, you know, my wife's a bookkeeper, uh, she also does taxes, which is the tax season right now that we're in, <clears throat> and uh, I needed to get something that handles big envelopes and uh, sometimes volumes of paper <clears throat> and uh, <clears throat> like I mentioned before I, I, I started out with one like kind of traditional with the roof and all that and messed up the dovetails and everything it was just an amateur mistake so <clears throat> like I said before this is along the lines of the Green Brothers um, uh, style of uh, building they built homes as well as uh, a lot of furniture and stuff. <clears throat> now I built this out of scrap in my shop. Uh, two different types of wood. Pretty ugly. I, I like to stain everything but the more I thought about this the more I'm going to paint it. And it'll probably be just as well because like I said I made out of scraps and the height I wanted to achieve this f six by six wasn't that really long enough. So I don't know if you can tell, but I have little blocks in here that took up the space for that. So it'll go continuous all the way up. And uh, this is all two by sixes, adjustable feet at the bottom. This is all ponderosa pine, all uh, scrap at the mill, and they, they take it, size it, glue it together. Very very sturdy, not 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 bad. One inch stock. So it gives it that extra beefy build, 
and when I was going with the uh, the green uh, motif of the uh, accentuated box joint, I kind of made out my own layout, and I actually let them extend proud, almost like log cabin away. <clears throat> The uh, the plugs I use African uh, mahogany, uh, the green brothers they would keep theirs with literally within a sixty fourth of an inch. I mean I don't know how you measure something like that. I, I mean I you, I do, but man that's you know along with my <clears throat> past timber framing experience, I left also those plugs proud. And every plug you see has got a screw, uh, two and a half inch screw going through it. Uh, again, there's no glue in this, like I said before. Uh, uh, pretty simple, really basic. And again, my my stuff is for a beginner, so this is a great way to start building something for you know uh, for your blankets at, at a, a blanket locker at the chest at the, at the foot of the bed or a toy chest or something, and just start uh, getting used to box joints. And then you move into like dovetails, uh, and this is very forgiving, like I've said before. So I'm going to start uh, with uh, the paint, and I'm going to paint it in the motif of uh, our home here. So it'll have three different colors in it. I'm going to be turning it upside down and paint the feet first, and the uh, <clears throat> and the underside of the box, and then uh, I'll continue with. Uh, with uh, the post and, and finish the box up. So that's it. I just wanted to finally set, let you know I got it done. I'm going to be painting this. <clears throat> then from here I'm going on to my other project, which is uh, we started last summer. The canopy for the front of our house. For uh, it gets so hot. I mean, it's brutally hot here. And, and protect our cars because I've got the shop, the garage for my shop. So um, I'm going to be continuing that and my buddy's uh, workbench. So I'm starting to slowly but surely catch up and uh, once I get that done this uh, debris here, this, this workbench is just a mess and uh, I've actually uh, decided I'm going to put uh, two banks of drawers here, two and two total of four and on one side here I'm going to have my uh, my sharpening station which is a uh, pull out full extension drawer. It'll be right there handy for me with my chisels on the other side so that's going to work out real nice so with that I'll start painting and uh, give you some snapshots as we go along and uh, until then uh, I'll see you at the end which is going to be a, probably a just a, a click for you but it'll be a few days for me okay see you later my little dog here <laughs> Pepsi <coughs> Okay, sweet. All right, here we go. Um, this is it. Uh, this is uh, a mailbox. Uh, uh, again, I know maybe it looks ugly to some people. Uh, uh, when the lid was first opened in the shop, it, to me it looked like a toilet. But uh, uh, no, you know, it, like I said before at the beginning, I, I started to make something traditional with dovetailing and I messed it up. I should have used the wood that I was using, but um, uh, I'm glad how it came out. Uh, the problem of, with the finishing is that I've got pine, pine rows of pine on top of dug fir, and the two woods just really looked to me ugly, and that's why I was going to paint it. But as I was painting, I just couldn't bring myself to paint the box itself because I just didn't want to lose all the detail work in it, even though it's not really fine detail, but it's still considerable. and. Um, I just didn't want to cover. Maybe later I'll paint it, but for right now I just got uh, four coats of urethane on it. So um, there's my email address at the bottom. It's been a fun project. Uh, a lot of basic stuff in it. I hope somebody has uh, learned something from it. Uh, again, this is not for the hardcore guys who know all their stuff. It's mainly for beginners, and uh, if they have any questions or are looking for ideas or whatever, uh, that's mainly what my videos are for. So there's my email, email address. Um, have a good time in the shop as always. Work safe and don't use any putty. <laughs> okay. See you on the next one. Bye bye.